I now want to show you a gem of English Gothic painting. It's a painting known as the Wilton Diptych from a former collection, uh, and it dates to the very end of the 14th century, 1395 to 1399. It's quite small, 18 and 3 quarters by 11 and a half inches, and it's now in the National Gallery of Art in London. As you can see, it has two panels. That's what a diptych is. It's a two-paneled uh, painting. And on one side, it shows Richard II, the king, kneeling with two patron well, three patron saints, introducing him to the Virgin Mary. And on the Virgin Mary's side, there is Mary, the baby Jesus, and many, many angels accompanying them. And you can see that it's actually a kind of different space because the ground is strewn with flowers. Now, this is a devotional diptych. It would have been for the king uh, to say prayers in front of. And also, it shows the king in perpetual prayer. So even when he's off doing other things, uh, in a sense, his image is still there praying. The medium, the material with which it's made, is tempera. Now, tempera is a water-based paint. It's made of pigment that is ground up to a powder, and the pigments are all natural pigments. They're either minerals or uh, they, some of them are vegetable matter. And you grind them up and you have to mix them with something liquid in order to make paint. So with tempera, it's water. And sometimes also egg yolk is mixed with that um, as a binder to hold the what, little flakes of, of pigment uh, together so it doesn't just float on the water. Um, or drop to the bottom, depending on what it is. It also uses a great deal of gold leaf, which you might expect from uh, something that is a royal um, painting. So here we're looking at the left side. It shows King Richard II of England kneeling in homage to the Virgin Mary and the Christ child. And the three patron saints that are with him are Saints Edmund, Edward the Confessor, and John the Baptist. So let's look at the detail here of Richard II. Um, you probably know something about Richard II from Shakespeare's play. <coughs> he lived from 1367 to 1400 and reigned from 1377 to 1399. He came to the throne very young. You can see really a child. And he was deposed by Henry Bolingbroke, his cousin, uh, who set himself up as Henry IV of England. What happened to Richard? Well, he was taken to the Tower of London and presumably he was murdered. Um, some stories say he was starved to death, but he died, I think, February 14th, 1400. 
before his terrible downfall, he was a great art patron. Uh, and so this is an example of some of the work that was produced for him. Now, when you're looking at this detail, you may be able to see very, very fine linear brush strokes. And that's how you paint with tempera. You use very tiny little brushes, paint with very tiny little strokes, and you build it up so that unless you are really close to it, you can't see the strokes. If you're standing back a little, it looks like a very smooth surface. So here we have Richard kneeling in homage to the Virgin Mary. And you might want to take a little closer look at that costume. It's a technique known as sagraffito. <laughs> Um, it's also used in ceramic ware, where you would paint a uh, one color slip over a different co uh, clay body and scratch away the pattern and the slip, but here it's used in painting. And the background has been gilded, it has a gold leaf over it, and then the paint was applied over the gold leaf and the artist scratched through the painting to leave these intricate patterns of gold. So it gives the impression of a gold brocade. Uh, and of course, beautiful patterns. Now in this case, you can see that the pattern looks like a deer that's, leaning, that's uh, lying there. And then you might notice he also has a, a kind of brooch or some kind of uh, emblem attached to the front of his garment. And that is a white heart. And that's a heart, H-A-R-T, uh, the stag or the deer. Uh, and the white heart was an emblem of Richard II. So here we have the white heart as uh, probably a brooch. Uh, and then we also have the pattern uh, in gold that has been, um, what, scratched into, uh, through the paints to reveal the gold beneath. Uh, you can see that also on uh, St. Edmund's robe. In this case, we have birds and crowns, uh, and they've been painted over with blue, and that's been scratched away, and you can see uh, it, it makes a pattern of these beautiful birds. Here you can see the background, which has uh, intricate designs, once again, in gold leaf. Uh, and you have uh, John the Baptist holding uh, this uh, little tiny, tiny, tiny little lamb, almost the size of a kitty cat, actually. Uh, but he has his hand on the back of uh, Richard, and he's introducing Richard to the virgin and child. You know, you just don't go up to real important people. Like, you know, a peasant doesn't just go up to the king. Uh, you have to have somebody to introduce you. And uh, uh, so that's what uh, these saints are doing. They're providing uh, introductions to the Virgin Mary. Uh, why is John holding uh, a tiny, tiny little sheep? Well, it's his emblem. Uh, John the Baptist uh, saw Christ, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And so the Agnus Dei, or the Lamb of God, refers specifically to Christ, but the identification of Christ as the Lamb of God, the sacrificial Lamb, uh, comes from John the Baptist. And of course, uh, that is part of the liturgy of the Mass. Uh, you know, when they talk about uh, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on me. So it might yet also in some way refer to uh, that plea for mercy, uh, which was a, a very well-known prayer. Now, I'm going to show you some details here of the uh, saints. And you'll see that these two saints are royal saints. Um, they both have crowns. 
Uh, they were two kings of England, St. Edmund and St. Edward the Confessor. So they were, they were kings of England, but they were uh, recognized as saints. Uh, one is known as Edmund the Martyr, and he ruled East Anglia from um, 855 to 861. Uh, he was a martyred saint um, when he refused to renounce Christ. Uh, he was killed by the Danes, and you may know um, that the Northmen uh, from the Scandinavian countries, Denmark, you know, Norway, Norway, Sweden, uh, would raid uh, England. The arrow that he's holding uh, is one of his attributes. He was beaten, he was shot with arrows, and then he was beheaded. So this is to help identify him as Edmund the Martyr. The other saint here is uh, St. Edward the Confessor, uh, who lived in the 11th century uh, from 1003 to 1066. And you may remember what happened in 1066 uh, after Edward died uh, and uh, Harold became the king. Uh, William of Normandy said, no, no, this was promised to me. And he invaded England and uh, that was the Norman conquest. It was when the, uh, the Normans from uh, what is now France, uh, from Normandy, uh, defeated the English and became the rulers of England, 1066, the Norman Conquest. Edward, of course, was dead before the Conquest. In fact, that was his death was what caused uh, the uh, who wanted to see, the people who wanted to succeed him caused the problems. Now, his attribute here is he's holding this this ring. And the story is uh, that he gave the ring to an old beggar as alms. You know, many, many people begging. Uh, maybe he didn't have money with him, so he gave him the very ring off his finger. Great example of largesse. Later, the old man appears to uh, two English pilgrims who have gone to the Holy Land and the old man says that he is John the Evangelist and gives them the ring and asks them to return it to Edmund and to tell the king that within six months he will be with John in heaven. So that he's going to die within six months when they, after they give him the ring. Um, so there he is holding uh, the ring, this very uh, consequential gift. Now, I want to remind you here, of course, we have this very rich and delicate painting. It has patterned gold leaf backgrounds, and we've seen already these rich golden brocade robes, robes made with the Strugovito technique, painting over the gold and scratching patterns through the color to reveal the gold beneath. And let's take a look at some of the angels. You have all these lovely angels with roses as, as uh, flower crowns uh, and very delicately plated, beautiful blue garments. But wait a minute, every one of them is wearing badges of what? Of fealty to King Richard. Uh, they're wearing King Richard's emblem, the white heart, even heaven is uh, approving of him uh, as uh, as king and they're wearing his badges it's as though they, uh, they almost as though they're wearing his livery he 
Here's a little Christ child. He's reaching out to the king. He's blessing the king. Uh, and he's dressed, as you can see, in gold, which shines, you know, uh, shines, but uh, is a beautiful contrast to the rich blue of the Virgin Mother, who is one of these, you know, delicate, uh, beautiful figures, uh, the courtly lady, uh, the Queen of Heaven. And just showing you a few more details here, you can see one of the patterned gold leaf backgrounds. Uh, the king's panel has a beautiful gold leaf background, but the ground is barren. And the virgin and the angels reside in a heavenly garden where the flowers just cover the ground. And here you see the detail, the garden of the, of the, uh, of the ground. The draperies of the virgin and angels are modeled in light and dark. So you have light blue, dark blue, medium blue. Uh, they're not just flat. They seem to be covering three-dimensional bodies, although they're very delicate and uh, uh, graceful bodies. Uh, the Virgin is in that same pose that we've seen before, where she's uh, standing in a kind of, uh, in this case, reverse S pose, uh, with her hip sways to one side as she supports the Christ child. And, of course, the child is reaching toward the kneeling king and conferring his blessing on Richard. But the heavenly beings seem to be allied with Richard and his dynasty. Uh, unfortunately for Richard, his dynasty does not last. And of course, um, after Bolingbroke usurps the throne, he sets up the house of Lancaster on the throne. But Richard is of his descendants of the house of York. So this ushers in what we call the Wars of the Roses. Um, that would, of course, not be known when this was painted. So the heavenly beings seem to be allied with Richard and his dynasty. Uh, they wear the, the angels wear badges of the king's emblem, a white heart, which is also worn by Richard. And then we'll see in a moment, it's also shown on the exterior of the altarpiece or the, uh, the exterior of the diptych, excuse me. And both the king and the angels wear seed pods of broom, which is the plant a gente, or the plantagenet. And it's the emblem of the plantagenet, which was the royal family of England. And here we see the exterior. These would be painted on the opposite sides of the panels we've already seen. Uh, so you have the coat of arms of the king and his white heart emblem. And one last look at the Wilton diptych. 